Hi there, my name is Julian Gomez, and what you're watching right now is a presentation that is part of the Honors Chemistry 2020 short lecture series. The research topic that I was assigned has to do with a synthetic fiber that can actually extract dissolved uranium from the ocean, which in all likelihood could probably solve the world energy crisis. In my slideshow, I'm going to tell you about what exactly a synthetic fiber is, how nuclear power works, and the benefits of this technology. So please, enjoy. This is Untapped Energy by Julian Gomez. So the topics and slides I'll be covering are all listed here. I'll be talking about, talking about the CNEN article I was assigned, the two main components in my presentation, synthetic fibers, what they are and how they're made, and nuclear power and the science behind it. The viability of this becoming a major resource, a summary of my main research points, and a list of my sources. The title of my assigned article is Fishing Uranium from the Ocean with a Spider Silk Line. To start off, let it be known that the world's oceans contain more than 4 billion metric tons of dissolved uranium ions, but due to its extremely low concentration in seawater, it's a challenge to extract it. In an attempt to solve this problem, Students at Hainan University have opted to creating synthetic fibers from artificial spider silk and a super uranium binding protein, or SUP, that is studied with amidozyme groups that are, attract uranium ions. A change in the pH level would be all that's needed to remove the metal ions attracted by mistake. If the technology were perfect, the, fib the fibers would be strung into an underwater fishery, bundled together, and attached to a line rising from a shallow sea floor. Synthetic fibers are fibers that are manufactured from chemicals such as coal and petroleum, or substances such as metallic, carbon, or glass fibers that are put through an extrusion process. Extrusion is a manufacturing process where a chemical substance is pushed through a nozzle to form long threads. Some fibers that are made with fabrics must be combined with acid and alcohol, sometimes heated, and then extruded. The aforementioned SUP fiber is made by combining artificial spider silk and the uranium absorbing protein. In order to make the SUP protein stronger, the, the research team mixed the SUP protein fiber with spider ion, which is the main protein found in spider silk. The research team genetically engineered a batch of E. coli to continuously produce the protein. When the fiber was injected into a buffer solution, which is an aqueous solution made up of a, a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, it assembled itself into a hydrogel fiber. The fiber itself is not as strong as spider silk, but it's stronger than most amidozyme based polymers. So in order to extract uh, uranium from the seawater, the protein fiber is placed into the center of a column and the seawater is pumped over it. So after about three and a half days, each gram of the fiber should extract about 12.33 milligrams of uranium. This specific fiber is thousands of times more selective of uranium ions specifically over other metal ions in the in the water and it's collected far more than any other competitors. So to strip the uranium from the fiber itself it has to be washed in EDTA. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the acid scientific name. The fiber retains about 90% of its original adsorption capacity after five rounds of fishing and washing, but it drops below 70% after 10 cycles. The fiber apparently biodegrades in the seawater, and that has, that's a problem for a practical use. The nuclear power process begins when the uranium fuel in a nuclear power plant is put through fission, where extra neutrons are introduced to the uranium atoms causing them to split. It is one of the cleanest and most efficient ways of making electricity, 
as the power plants don't burn any materials, so they don't produce any smog or combustion waste. They also produce no harmful gases, so they don't harm air quality or affect climate change. Nuclear power is the most efficient electricity source as, they can, as nuclear power plants can work around the clock and produce large-scale electricity for months at a time. Nuclear power already supplies approximately 20% of energy in the United States of America and 12% worldwide. Once uranium is collected to be used as fuel, they are made into ceramic pellets, each pellet able to produce the same amount of fuel as about 150 gallons of oil or a ton of coal. These pellets are then inserted into 12-foot metal fuel rods. Hundreds of these metal rods are bundled together. This bundle is called a fuel assembly. They are then placed into the reactor core of the power plant. The uranium pellets in the metal rods are then put through fission, where the atoms of the uranium ions are split. The heat produced from the process is used to boil water, and the steam produced is used to turn bl the blades of a steam turbine. The turbine drives generators to produce electricity, much like a wind turbine. I have made a pros and cons list about the sustainability of this becoming a major resource for electricity. The pros include the fact that the uranium deposit in the ocean is virtually inexhaustible. This would allow excavators to shift from mining uranium ore to extracting it from seawater thus reserving what little resources there are left on the land. Not only is the 4 billion tons of uranium in the sea able to fuel 1,000 nuclear power plants for 100,000 years, uranium in seawater is constantly replenished. Nuclear power would be as infinite as solar, wind, and hydropower. The effectiveness of nuclear power was described in the previous slide, so if this technology was perfected, nuclear power could most likely be the sole provider of electricity. This would also help the environment flourish as there would be less need for trees to be cut down and oil to be, oil to be extracted for, for power. The cons to this idea are the fact that the mass production of the fiber would be fairly costly. Due to uranium being in low concentration in seawater, this makes the process fairly lengthy. So these underwater fisheries would have to be on a very large scale and have to be extremely widespread. In the adsorption of uranium ions in, uh, underwater, as the fiber's effectiveness wears down, they start to adsorb more metal ions than uranium. This would lead to the fibers having to be replaced often. After all my research, in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons in this situation. So, to top this all off, let's go over everything I've talked about. The ocean contains an almost infinite amount of dissolved uranium, which can be used to make electricity. A synthetic fiber that is made with a special uranium adsorbing protein has been developed to extract it. This could be a major breakthrough in searching for the perfect source of electricity. The technology, unfortunately, is not perfect. Its effectiveness deteriorates rapidly after its first 10 uses. But the fact remains that if this fiber could be improved, that it would almost solve the world's struggle for power. All research sources used in making this presentation are cited here. Credit for all images, all images used are under each specific image.